Good evening. I do not attempt to adjust your radio. There is nothing wrong. We have taken control as to bring you this special show. Smoothscaling.com Smoothcoloremission.com Smoothrotation.net Smoothmovement.gov.edu All are achieved with mathf.lerp Let me show you how you can do this in my video. I'm going to structure this video into three segments. First, I'm going to explain as simply and as quickly as possible what mathf.lerp actually does. Then I'm going to show you these three lines of code. You can take them or leave them and be on your way. But if you actually want to stick around and learn the sort of math behind it, the mechanism, then you'll be able to apply it to a lot of problems. Here's what mathf.lerp actually does. You give it a minimum or a start value, in this case one, and you give it a stop value or a maximum, in this case two, and then you supply it with some number that ranges between zero and one. You can think of 0.5 as being the midpoint between these two values. So if you gave mathf.lerp 0.5 after telling it you wanted your min as one and your max as two, it will tell you 1.5 back. If you give it 0.25, it'll give you 1.25 back. And if you give it 0.75, it'll give you 1.75 back. This is universally applicable with any number for your min and your max. So what I want to achieve with my lerping code is to have an enemy with some health, and as it loses health, I want it to shrink, but I want it to do so in a smooth fashion. And if it ends up gaining health through some mechanism, I want it to grow, and I want it to grow through a smooth mechanism. The first thing that I'm doing is calculating a fractional health. So if my enemy has 50 out of 100 health, I divide 50 by 100, and I get a 0.5 back. If it has 25 out of 100 health, I divide 25 by 100, and I get 0.25 back. After that, I'm calculating a target size. So if I now know that my enemy has 25% health, which corresponds to a 0.25, I want to know where between my min size and my max size I should be sitting by lerping between 1 and 5, by passing in that 0.25, just as we did with the graph earlier. Finally, I can change the scale of the actual enemy by using transform.localScale and setting a new instance of a vector 3. Now in each x, y, and z parameter or argument, I'm doing another lerp, and this is what's actually causing the smoothing. So every frame, I'm changing my starting point of my lerping function to the previous frame's local scale in that dimension. And the, and the stopping part is the actual target size. Now the number that I pass in is time.delta time times a sort of lerping speed, which can be adjusted. Um, and if you don't understand how this actually achieves smoothing, I recommend sticking around for the rest of the video. So the goal will be to build a linear interpolation function that interpolates between 1 and 5. Or in other words, when we give it a number between 0 and 1, we want to know, sort of as a fraction or as a percentage, how far is that number between 1 and 5? Between 1 and 5. If I give it the number 0, I expect to get back the number 1. And if I give it the number 1, I expect to get back the number 5. We'll start by looking at what a function is, by looking at the simplest possible linear interpolation function we could possibly make called the identity function. And now remember, all a function is, is a machine that takes in one number and spits out another number. Here is our input, here is our output. I can visualize what this function is actually doing by plotting its points on a graph and here those points are connected with a line. I treat my x-axis as my input and my y-axis as my output. If I look here and I feed in 0.5 as my input to this machine, what does it give me back? Well, I trace up to the line, I trace over, and I get a 0.5 back. If I feed in a 1, I look up to the line and it gives me a 1 back. Now we can see this mathematically in our function because it's not actually doing anything to the number x. When we feed it x, it gives us x back. Now if we want to access numbers outside of this range, we can simply multiply x by some number that we're interested in. 
And we know that five will be our maximum. So how about we multiply by five and I will quickly change the axis on this graph to limit to only see between zero and one on the X axis. And so as you can see here now, I've created a linear interpolation function that when I feed it zero, I get back zero. But when I feed it one, I get back five. And when I feed it 0 0.5, I get back 2.5. Problem here is we are now restricted to our minimum being zero. So if we think back to high school math class, we know that we can shift functions around by adding constants to them. So if I take this and I know I want my minimum to be one, I can add one and it will add one to all of the points on the line, shifting it upwards. Now our function when fed zero gives us one, but when fed one gives us six. So that's a problem. We realize that what we need to multiply by is not five, but the range of our minimum and our maximum, which we can achieve by taking our maximum and subtracting our minimum. Now, if we feed in the number 0 0.5, for example, we're asking the linear interpolation function, what number is halfway between one and five? And that number is three. Or what number is at the end of the range one and five? And that number is five. And so what unity is actually doing is it's just taking these spots and changing them to variables. And I'm going to call this max and min. We'll create a slider for these. All unity is doing is saying, what's your max value? What's your min value? I will create a different linear interpolation function for each of your circumstances. And you can change the minimum and you can change the maximum as you will. And at any time you can feed in some number between zero and one. And I will tell you how far between your min and your max you're, you're sitting at. Okay, so if my min is nine and my max is 49.3, if those are the two scales that I'm super interested in for my game for whatever reason, and I want to know what number is halfway between that, well, it's 29.11. If I want to say what number is 70% of the way between those two numbers, it's 37.17. If for some reason I need my min to be 0 0.8 and I want to know what's halfway in between, 25.099. And that is how simple a MathF LERP function is. So if we look at the documentation here, we have our start value, our end value, and the interpolation value between the two floats. So how does Unity actually achieve smoothing with the lerp function? It seems from the shape of the function that things should change linearly and that they shouldn't ease in or ease out or accelerate in and decelerate out. But the trick is to every frame recalculate a linear interpolation function using a new minimum, okay? And use a constant for your interpolated value. So for example, here, we are linearly interpolating between zero and five. Let's say we have a cube of scale zero, meaning it's essentially invisible, and we want to quickly grow it up to five, but we want the animation to look smooth. Well, we will say, here's our linear interpolation to start with, and I want you to interpolate by a constant of 0 0.5. So in one frame, Unity is gonna change the scale of the cube to be 2.5 in each dimension. So bump, it pops up to 2.5, but the trick here, I said, is to set your new minimum to that value. And remember, our interpolated value is a constant, so it's not gonna change. We're again gonna say, well, what's halfway between 2.5 and five? And that number is 3.75. Between zero and 2.5, is a much larger jump than between 2.5 and 3.75. It's only 1.25 of a jump. So in the next frame, Unity sets the scale of the cube to be 3.75. That then becomes our new minimum. What's halfway there? 4.3, an even smaller jump. That then becomes our new minimum. What's halfway there? 4.6, an even smaller jump, 4.6. What's halfway there? 4.85. And so technically, you will never actually reach five using this method. But because of the way computers calculate things, it will, it will eventually reach that 
uh, number just through through rounding. But as you can see, by recalculating a new linear interpolation function with each frame, you can achieve fast initial movement and smooth deceleration. Now we are going to write the code to actually achieve this. So I have an empty class here in Unity called Lerp it Baby, deriving from mono behavior. I'm going to start by setting a few variables that are going to make us able to access this thing in the editor. So we'll imagine that what we're writing is an enemy that as it takes damage it shrinks and as it regains health it grows in size. So to emulate this we need a public float current health and we need a public float max max health. Okay, we'll set this equal to 100 for now. Next we will decide Hmm, what sizes do we want our enemy to go between? Let's say public float minimum size is 1.0 and public float maximum size is 10.0. Finally, we're going to define this arbitrary variable value that's going to sort of alter how fast the acceleration actually occurs. We'll call it public float lerp speed. And don't worry if you don't understand this right now. Now I'm going to write our start function and we'll say that current health is equal to max health. This will ensure that our enemy has full health when the game starts. Now I'm going to write the update function. And this is where all of the juicy stuff is going to occur. Now each frame we're going to be calculating the fractional health of our enemy. So if it has 50 out of 100 health, then we need to know that it has 50% health, and as a fraction, this is represented as 0.5. So it's very easy to make this. We just say float f equals to current health divided by max health. Easy peasy. So when health is 50 out of 100, f should be 0.5. We're going to use that number to lerp. Now we're going to make a target size variable here because remember each frame we want to know what size should we be going towards what size do we want to be lerping towards so the target size is mathf.lerp between the minimum and the maximum and we pass in f so when health is 50 out of 100 f is 0 0.5 mathf.lerp tells us what number is halfway, 0.5 way, between 1 and 5. And I just remembered that I set this to 10, so let's actually say 5. In this case, it's 3. Nice. If you want to change the size of a game object, you can use transform.localScale. Now you need to set this to an instance of a vector 3. To create a vector 3, we can type new vector 3 and then put three different numbers in here corresponding to our x, y, and z dimensions. Now to achieve smoothing, we're going to be performing a mathf.lerp in here as well with each frame passing in transform.localScale.x as our minimum, the target size as our maximum, and then time dot delta time times the lerp speed as our sort of uh, fractional interpolation value. Now time dot delta time here sort of serves two purposes. It's a very small number so that when you have big differences between your min and your max, it's gonna jump, but it's not gonna jump by that much. And so it also will sort of scale with the frame rate of the application making smoothing look smooth or changes look smooth. Lerp speed is that variable I defined above. I'm going to set it to 2 here. Um, multiplying this number by time dot dot time just increases how far along in our linear interpolation that we're going to be jumping. Now I'm going to copy this twice, remove this comma, clean up that space, and say y, oops, and z. And that is all there is to the code. 
So every single frame, this is what we're doing. We recalculate what the new enemy health is. We say, with that new health, what size should we be lerping towards? And then we're going to set the transform.local scale with each frame closer and closer to that target size. And this is how close we're jumping each time. If this comes out to be, say, 1%, then each frame we're only moving up by 1%, but we're matching that by, in that next frame, setting its new scale as the starting position of the lerp, which is going to change the amount that it lerps by each time. 